So here I am at West Bromwich Albion outside the away end with the fans going in and today I'm going to ask some fans and I'm going to ask some media as well whether there's an agenda against Manchester City. I know a lot of Blues believe that and I know a lot of the national media obviously believe exactly the opposite. So what is the case? Is there an agenda or not? You'll have your own view but feel free to put it at the bottom of here but let's get both sides of the equation. You know me, I always try to be fair. Yeah, I'd say about 99.9% .9 but guys like yourself always back us up all the time but I remember being a kid growing up it goes back um, say watching on the ball before you used to go to the home games at Main Road when Ian St John and Jimmy Greaves used to do it Ian St John used to pre, pre City Jimmy Greaves probably had his problems with City going back because when we destroyed him on the Ballet and Ice against Tottenham 4-1 so he probably didn't like like us since then I've always had his own opinions but yeah there's, I, think, I think there's a lot of jealousy involved there's always been jealousy involved no matter what there definitely is for example, this week, if you took the Manchester Evening News website, try to find City, you can't find it anywhere. But the headline is Manchester United every time. And also, the BBC, the other day, they mentioned everyone, the Cara, Bauer, whatever it's called, teams, and they didn't mention Manchester City until the, until the draw itself and that was all day. There's plenty of evidence you can see in the paper and the press. For example, um, in The Sun this week, they talked about Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United and money bags Manchester City. That's how they described us. My, my problem with that is there's other teams that have got money as well. I'm very proud of the fact that we're, we're a rich club and we can afford what we afford to buy who we want to buy. But actually, it's derogatory in the in the way they were doing it. I know I've, I've heard a lot about this over the over the last few years, uh, Ian. And as you know, I've been uh, I've been covering City myself for quite a few years now. You know, I think that one one of the things I always come back to is the fact that when the takeover happened in 2008, City went from virtually never featuring in the papers to featuring an awful lot. You know, it's a story that fascinated everybody. And because of that, there were a lot more column inches written. I think that City fans probably began to take more notice of what was being written about their club and, uh, uh, and, and felt that some of it wasn't quite fair. For me, that was happening to a lot of different clubs. You know, uh, I've, worked, I've been lucky, I've worked up and down the country. So I saw a similar situation with the takeover happening at Chelsea. Personally, I thought there was more reason for Chelsea fans to be upset than City fans. But having said that, you know, I think there have been incidents where City perhaps have got the, the thin end of the wedge, so to speak. You know, they're, uh, they're based up here, but they're a long way from London. A lot of the journalists, a lot of the columnists are down in London. So uh, there probably have been one or two incidents. Overall, uh, you know, my message to City fans would be to enjoy it, really, because uh, they're getting so much in the papers these days. A lot of it's positive, and, and to enjoy that rather than start looking for the little things that, uh, that upset them. So do you believe there's an agenda against City in the national press? Oh, yeah. God. Oh, oh absolutely. Kevin absolutely. De Bruyne. Nobody likes us. Oh, Kevin De Bruyne. Nobody oh, likes us. We'll do what we do and we'll win it. What do you mean, what's against City? One, two, everything three, they do, oh, everything they say, they Kevin want us to fail. Oh, of course they do. Oh, BBC Radio 5 Live, every time United's on, they love them. Do, do not like us but what we'll do we'll do what we do we play football we'll play football to the right level and then we'll beat we everybody and eventually they'll have to like us because they don't everyone. like us they don't like us they want us to fail but we won't fail because we're the best team in all the land and all the world i think probably sometimes a lot of city fans can't quite believe just how far they've come and so i think it is a case of you know whereas man united have probably been hated by a lot of people for a long time and have had to put up with it. I think it goes to the territory and they're now at the top table and uh, I think they're going to have to just put up with it, but you know, it's a nice problem. So is there a national agenda against City? It's, uh, eased off a bit. I think there's just so many uh, journalists who've grown up supporting United. Just follows from that, really. So you definitely think there's... Oh yeah, thing? yeah, well there's obvious bias. We have to see some of the things that have been said in recent years. and They actually admitted it on telly, didn't they? Which, what was the one we um, City have done? It's very hard to praise City, but we suppose we better do it or something like that. So yeah, there, there is an agenda. Uh, maybe they're trying the best now because what can they say at the moment? Just such brilliant football, so they're going up a bit. 
Well, uh, success and playing good football maybe brings stronger opinions the way of, of clubs that are being successful. I've, I've never heard anything to that degree. All the people that I speak to in and out of the media are very impressed with what they see City doing, the players that they're bringing, and the football they play is fantastic. So if there are people out there who have decided that City are doing the wrong things uh, and aren't happy with the way City go about things, that's up to them. But I, I've heard very few dissenting voices. Everybody I speak to in and out of the media seem very complimentary about the football City are playing and the, the actual direction the club is taking as well. What about the game now today? What do people think is going to happen here at West Brom? Looks like another win, doesn't it? The way we're playing, um, if we keep that up, I don't see it being a, an Arnakin. I think they're pretty average. If we play as we have been playing in the league matches, I don't really see a problem. I think I think with a couple, maybe two or three. At the moment, the way it goes, I, I, I'm quite happy to win 1-0. 3-0. Three, three no. Gabo Jesus' first goal. It depends. If we turn up, then it's, it's, it's going to be goals, but... If we don't, then I don't know. How can you stop De Bruyne, Asani and Jesus and Sterling Mate, and De Bruyne off. De Bruyne You're is... not going to stop him, are you? We let the Albion since 1993. And you're sitting out of view of the pitch with all this array of electronics and camera stuff and mixers. And what do you do? Well, basically, we uh, take all the feeds from the Sky OB trucks and then we send them around the uh, exact boxes and to, to the press and onto the concourse areas and everywhere. So, the, the, What's it like not actually seeing the game in the flesh? The game's just out there and you don't see it, do you? Well, we, we get more angles here than you do outside. That's true. <laughs> yeah. What did you make of the first half, Ben? Um, yeah. I think it was a um, pretty good game. Uh, both sides are having a go. But uh, Man City at the moment are uh, on top. Well, I'm not quite sure how that game only ended up being 3-2 to City. I thought they were completely dominant. David Silva and Leroy Sane in particular going forward were awesome at times. And a couple of mistakes at the back, perhaps a couple of bits of lack of concentration and squandered opportunities, it has to be said, at the other end as well because City was so good they really should have run away with it. But they've got the three points, that's the main thing. The away run sequence continues, the winning sequence continues. Now let's get the reaction of supporters. We were poor, very poor today, but... Poor? I don't think we played very well, but we won. Sign the champions, sign the champions, play ball, we still win. To be fair, I think if we'd have played Sterling from the start, I think it'd been a lot more. Sterling offers us width. Bernardo Silva, he drifted into the middle. David Silva then drifted over to the left and everything went down one side. But had Raheem on the right, I think we'd have just pulled him out, we'd opened up massively. Tough day, good win, three points, move on. All right, great game, and uh, I think we almost uh, give it away at the end. So I don't know who made the mistakes. Uh, Otamendi chested it down, should have ended it or cleared it. Um, but yeah, great game, really enjoyed it. That's Come a on, City. Contrast to another City fan who said it was a poor game. Or no, a... I, don't, I thought possession-wise we dominated the game. Just you know, just yeah. at the end tried to throw it away with two sloppy goals. But yeah, did well. Happy. No, they're going to put on something else, won't they? You know, how, how do I look at things now? Every time you watch something, City have a great win. They never show it. But if anything goes wrong at City, then the first thing to show it all, even ex even ex City players, if they mess up. They always, they always mention the word ex-Manchester City player when, they, when the things are looking down. But let's see what I say about us at the moment, do you know what I mean? So hopefully we're on the up again and let, let the press take us seriously for once. Brilliant result, but if we're going to win the league, which I think we probably will, then we need to not concede goals like that at the end. Uh, Sane should have had about six, could have, should have, you know, whichever. But yeah, brilliant result, um, on we go. Never really got out of second gear, mate, to be honest. Made hard work of it. Don't know what they were doing at the back with Ossam and it, but uh, they're saving themselves for Wednesday. We're looking, like you say, we're looking for perfection, and um, we carve it every game. So it is what it is. Three two, we won. Still five points clear. Um, could have been a better performance in the midfield, I thought. Thought, um, thought, 
that Gabriel Jesus had an off day today. I think couldn't be starting on uh, Wednesday against Napoli. But otherwise, three points, can't complain. Tony, there's your glass one. Is that? In the, in the room. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Well, from Pep Guardiola's point of view, I probably, it seems strange to say, because you go away from home, you win 3-2, but he's probably disappointed in the goals that City gave away, because if you're looking to challenge for Premier League titles, do well in the Champions League, the one thing you have to do is defend really solidly and not be sloppy, and they gave away two avoidable goals today, so City, as usual, brilliant going forward, they weren't as clinical as they normally are, they did miss a fair number of chances as well, but ultimately they win the game, they pick up three points away from home, so it is job done. Of course, Guardiola has such high standards. I'm sure there'll be criticisms of his players and say there's things we need to change, certainly defensively, if we're going to challenge for Premier League titles and do well in the Champions League.